चेक 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 Hi, I'm Grace from Juno. Hi, Grace. Just here to help with any tech questions and make sure everything's up and running before your session. Yeah, no, I think thus far it's okay. Um, uh, what about you? Do you see that um, it's okay as far as? Yep, perfect. I can hear you. See you perfectly. Are you going to have any slides or anything? Yeah, let me just try to share the screen. Yeah, let's go. Let's do that quickly to make sure everything's working there properly. Yeah. I forgot the link for the share screen. It should, it should yes. just say share screen. Oh, that's interesting. It's not there. Um, it's just expand screen off and SRCs on changing camera. One second, it should appear. Well, there's nothing on the bottom there for you? Mm. No. On the bottom where the on off. Yeah, it uh, when I was uh, testing it earlier you know during the training there was okay let me oh yeah, yeah, call yeah, in. yeah. i got you it. see the share screen yeah perfect so let me go to the chrome tab and this can is it yep i see your screen but it's um it's the program i believe it's the world Cloud poll, that's what I see at the moment. All right. And because I can't see it for some strange reason. I see your join. You can't see it. Yeah. Can you see the um, Slido and? Uh... Yeah, I do see that. All right. So probably. It may be if you, um, if on the icon when you share your screen, there's like um, a button that says expand screen, you can minimize it so you can see it as well. Yep, I can. That's the thing, you know, publishing, it just says publishing your desktop, but okay. does not show me myself the same screen that you can see. Um, Another, are you using Chrome? Yeah. Um, another option to do so you can see the chat in this and have to choose two, two tabs is if you go um, into the session again in a new tab and then okay, I'll share my screen really quickly so I can show you. Okay. One moment, I just talked to you. Okay. Right. You see mine, correct? Do you yeah. see how this green button, you can split your screen so it's like this, and then you can pull up this tab in the other side. So if we do yeah. it like this, oops, didn't do that. Oh. Yeah, do that again. Uh, from the yeah, green well, tab. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to, there we go. And then you can have one tab here and then have your presentation here on the other side. Ah, okay, so that I can do. So you have like, so you're able to see them in both places. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, can you see the first question? I see the first, yeah, the active poll, how does volunteering empower your young people? Yeah. Okay, two. So you can see all the slider questions? Mm -hmm. Yep, all you're that. doing it perfectly. Perfect. So that's fine. Okay. So that works. My only challenge is if I could see the same in the 
in the same screen as uh, you know where we both are in the panel screen basically uh, it would have been easier for me because now i have to minimize the one tab and the other tab so they are very very it, small yeah that's the only thing and i can't read the chat screens, you know so so oh, that's small. what i meant is um if you oh yeah that's the thing is if you actually maximize it on the side of the tab you could probably be able to see both yeah it's okay i'll i'll manage okay and then if you need anything i will be um in the mod tab so if anything all right technically so, goes on perfect perfect um mm -hmm. and uh the the read out loud the statement what do we call it um the housekeeping part yeah Oh, I'm not sure about that. I think someone from the Global Youth Summit will be doing that. I'm just on the Juno team to make sure the tech part works. No worries, no worries. I think someone from the Youth Summit will probably pop in in a little bit to help you with that. No worries, no worries. I have that. I just wanted to yeah. check that if someone will uh, copy and paste it into the chat or it will be read out loud anyways. So that's yeah. Um, I do, I don't know if anyone mentioned this to you. I'm not sure if you guys are having a moderator for the chat, but for the chat, it does, the information doesn't save once more people add and they type in. So you might have to retype or copy and paste something if there's um, new people that join. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, it looks like we're all set up. Yeah. And if you need anything, I will be here in the mod chat. And then we will be starting, it will automatically start in 20 minutes. So if you see on the bottom of your screen next to the emojis in blue, it's a counter countdown that says that when it's gonna be live. All right. Perfect. 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 Thanks a lot, Grace. No worries. Um, I'll just be here um, in the background if you need anything. Yeah, yeah. I'll also switch off the video for the moment and the audio.
Hi in there, Riandra. This is Joseph from Juno. I was muted. Oh, how are you? Can you hear me? Joseph, I can hear you. Grace, also I can hear. Are okay, you not, are you, you're not able to hear me or are you able to hear me? No, I can hear you, but I can also hear Grace. Oh, but you can also hear Grace. Okay, awesome. So that said, uh, how's everything? Are you pretty much set? Everything is fine. Um, can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you really well. I see that you have a nice background now from when we last spoke during our training. <laughs> no, I tried to uh, see, you know, it's close to midnight here and standing uh, after a long day on Friday oh, wow. might be a bit challenging. Yeah. So I changed the location. Only this... Um, only the challenge being that I had to leave my large screen. Now I'm only on the laptop. So uh, reading, reading the chat because I'm, I have to break the screen, use two tabs. So reading the chat in such small screen may be a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, trying to think of who will be the moderator on your session. Yes. There should be, yeah. Danielle in the session. Danielle is. Danielle will be the moderator for this one. Oh, she's in it right now on the mod tab. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but there should be another moderator here um, from um, from Global Youth themselves. Okay. Yeah, and so if you want, oh, Daniela. Okay, there we are. Yeah. Okay. Daniela. Hi, Daniela. Hi, I'm here for support in so uh, in session support. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so we were just talking with Nereandra. Um, he might have a little bit of problems reading the chat and the Q&A section. Would you be comfortable helping him either flash it on the screen or just kind of um, chime in every once in a while to, to read some of the questions that may be important? Um, sure, but is there a moderator? Yeah, 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 so your account should have a moderator in it. Um, so for any chat that comes up, so for example, if I, well, mostly Q&A really. So for any Q&A that comes up, you're able to pop it onto the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. If, if um, Nereandra, if Daniela was to do that, will you, be, will you still be able to see that on the bottom right corner there? Or is it still a little bit hard to read for you? Yeah, let me see. D can she do that again? Because I didn't see where it came. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All righty. Um, and then Mar uh, Maria is also, oh, hi, Maria. Welcome. Hello. Um, so she will also be in the session with you. Um, so if anything, maybe you guys can work together in getting the, the Q&A in the chat as well. Um, J JB, will you yeah. clarify a question that Daniela asked that I wasn't too sure about? Yeah. Um, for the raise hand feature, it, it does not automatic. Whoever the attendee doesn't automatically appear on the screen, correct? Correct. Yeah. So uh, if anybody raises their hand, um, they will need to first here. Actually, oh, I won't be able to get in here with just a regular account. But if anyone raises their hand, you will see it in the QA tab with their name on there. And then the, the emoji like that looks like that. So just click on the emoji itself, uh, Daniela, and then that's that. When you click on it, that's when you give them permission to actually go on stage. So they don't go automatically on stage or on camera. Okay, perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, um, do I, I have to stay on screen, or I can go as an observer as before? Yeah, you can that's go perfect. as an, you oh, can perfect. go as an observer. Yeah, yeah. No, no worries. You stay on screen. And then, is there any questions coming up? We have about 10 minutes before you guys' session, so there's still ample amount of time. Grab a drink, go to the bathroom, do a little bit of rehearsal. 
We tested his PowerPoint, so it's working as well. So we're good on that. Perfect, perfect. Oh, we also have another moderator here, Fariel. Hi, hi, Fariel. Hello, Actually, everyone. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that you were able to send an emoji. How did you do that? Or are you on the phone, maybe? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm using my mobile phone, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, I'm, I'm missing something now. I'm <laughs> something I did not know. Okay, so you are on your phone. Gotcha. All righty. Um, well, I'm going to go into the other green room just to make sure that that is going correctly, but it seems like you guys are set and ready to go. Um, if you guys need to do some kind of rehearsal or communicate a little bit on how you guys want to tackle the session itself, feel free to do so, and we're always here for, for help if you need it. Sure, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Grace. No worries. Yep, I'll be here in the background in the mod chat if you guys need anything. Um, just message me. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. No problem. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Maria. Can you see on the screen the Slido? Yes, I can. All right. Um, and it's working fine. I just confirm that at all time the QR code and the Slido code are, are visible on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yes, I can. Okay. That's good. Okay, this is the last one. Okay. Something so, I saw from, ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, what? Ah, okay. No, I was just going to say that something I saw from the previous session is that people take a bit, um, I went to another session and I also delivered the session and people take a bit to share. Um, so, it's just, it's a bit awkward for like a few seconds, but then they start sharing. So just to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, I was I was listening to the Isaac uh, session mm -hmm. because I joined it a bit later. Uh, I saw you and I forget the name of the gentleman. Abhishek. Uh, yeah. Abhishek, okay. And uh, yeah, when he asked about the conflict question, I saw that there was a lot of pause, but probably when I saw the answers, People were typing a lot, yes, so exactly. maybe, yeah. So. Yes, I think they were typing, yeah, exactly. Um, at the beginning, uh, do you want to read the harassment thing, the long thing, or do you want me to read it? Because I already read it once. Oh, go ahead, read it. Uh, it's perfectly fine with me. I was just telling Joseph that I have to. I had to shift my uh, location, uh, <laughs> and I lost the use of the large screen. So mm. I it would be better for you to be i'm an old man yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> <that old. laughs> so yeah it would be perfect if you can uh, read it um mm -hmm. what we will do like we discussed uh, we will make it uh, interactive so um when i ask questions when people say something uh, write something in the chat um, i would also depend upon you to you know go ahead and read some of the things and say you know, that people are from here and there, and I will also say so that it becomes, you know, kind of a continuous uh, talking uh, without much of silence. Uh, for in sure. Between. And yeah. even when I ask, uh, put the questions forth, you know, we will wait for them to answer the questions, but we'll also, uh, you know. Uh, answer ourselves, yes. Yeah, yeah so that it covers and we'll see you know how long it's 45 minutes like i said uh, i thought i had uh, 30 minutes so I, I i believe we should be able to yes i think so too for, because abhishek and i also we when we rehearsed it was like 20 minutes and then it ended up being 45 so it goes longer than it is um yeah. but if everything is okay i'm just gonna run to get water and then i will be back sure
So we start when it shows live, right? Exactly. So we, it shows live and then um, you start seeing that people join on the site. Yeah. Um, then we can wait a bit. Yeah, yeah, because when it goes live, even I would not immediately join, you know, for a second. So hi, Maria, I think we are live now. Yes, I think so. We wait for a few minutes before a few more colleagues join or people join, yeah. Welcome everyone who's joining. Uh, hello everyone um welcome to all of you why don't you uh, type in in chat where you are joining from brazil lebanon netherlands latvia ireland from the us usa Ecuador, Belize, Czechia, Sri Lanka. Oh, way late in the night, Sri Lanka. Czechia, Czech Republic, Czech Republic, quite a few. Bangladesh, Aruba. So we have people from all over the world. We have. All right. Uh, really a lot of countries representation, Maria. So why don't, uh, Maria, you go ahead and uh, tell us about how, uh, what are the housekeeping rules and uh, about the session? Perfect. Uh, thank you, Narendra. So uh, welcome everyone. Ah, we have someone from Colombia. I'm Colombian, so welcome to the session. Um, and welcome everyone who's joining us from Juno and also everyone who's joining us from YouTube. So the name of the session is Gap Year with a Purpose. And we're going to be talking about plenty of topics um, that concern young people. Um, but before we start and before we go into what the session will be about, I just wanted to remind you of a few ground rules and what are the principles that we have in the summit. So as you know, um, you are not joining this session, but also the Global Youth Summit. Um, so we invite you to, and whatever you're joining from, if it's social media, YouTube, or if it's Juno, we invite you to keep things, these things in mind. The first one is, please note that this session is part of the summit, so you are welcome to join the rest of the program and also to enjoy the other days of the summit. The second thing is that by joining this session, everyone who will have the opportunity to speak consents to their image and audio being broadcast. Then also by participating in the Global Youth Summit, you have agreed to behave professionally, respectfully, and be culturally sensitive towards other people to promote the principles of respect, inclusion, and diversity, as well as to actively prevent and not engage in abusive behavior of any kind that leads to any harm, prejudice, discrimination, or harassment against any person. If you do not follow these principles or the summit's code of conduct, you will be removed from the session and from the event altogether. Um, and also, remember that we have a safeguarding team moderating our interaction on the Juno platform, the live broadcast chat function, and on social media channels. So if you or anyone at any point feel unsafe or witnesses concerning behavior, please reach out by sending an email to the email you're going to have on the chat, which is safe at globalyouthmobilization.org, and you may get in touch with the support team. 
Also, please rest assured and remember that these, the information that will be emailed will be kept private and confidential. And with um, those ground rules on the table, we can start with the session. So um, I think Narendra, maybe you can introduce yourself and then I can introduce myself. Thanks, thanks a lot, Maria. Um, good, uh, well, it's night here. Uh, I am Narendra uh, Mishra. I work with the United Nations Volunteers Program and I'm based in uh, Germany at its headquarters in Bonn. Um, and I work on what we call volunteer infrastructure, which is to create the enabling environment for people to be able to volunteer uh, uh, mostly in discussion with the member states or the national governments and uh, other stakeholders. Over to you, Maria. Um, thank you. And my name is Maria Grau. I am um, part of ISEC and the part of ISEC's global leadership team. So for the ones who joined us in the previous session, you already heard a bit more about ISEC. And for the ones who don't know, ISEC is a global youth-led organization. And I am currently part of the team that is based in the headquarters in Montreal. What I am in charge of is brand and public relations. So I am in charge of the different um, partnerships that we have and the different uh, like-minded organizations that we work with for our vision, which is youth leadership development. And um, we're very happy to also be present at the summit. Great. Great, Maria. So I have been following some of the other sessions and I see that um, uh, I am really happy to note that um, many of the participants, speakers and others have mentioned volunteering um, aspects, especially that uh, their own experiences when uh, they themselves have volunteered or how volunteering is happening in response to, especially now, in response to COVID-19. So why don't we begin with one of the uh, grave challenges that uh, I think most of the countries in the world uh, are facing. Um, uh, we already saw significant number of uh, people from across the globe. So uh, there is nothing new that I can probably say, but why don't we uh, listen to you or maybe uh, if you can type in into the chat, how has COVID-19 affected you? Because we want to see how has COVID-19 affected the young people. Uh, if you could type in. You could type in if it has affected your education, your access to education, if you have been in work, if it has in any ways affected the way you work or the kind of work you were engaged in, whether you had to change work because of COVID, or health, mental health, any of the issues, if you could, uh, all right. Delayed education plans, that, that is something that we have seen as Isaac a lot. Right. Lack of social circle. Mental health took everything for granted, realization now. How to communicate, education, education grandparents, social interactions, taught new IT skills, negatively affected mental health, education, mental health. Right. Okay. Practice sports. All right, so there has been um, a few studies. A uh, recent one was a, a study done by ILO and probably that was also I was hearing or referred to in one of the earlier sessions as well. Now we all understand that COVID-19 crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives, young or old, all alike. But with young people, it has really affected hugely. Even before COVID-19 pandemic, perhaps you would know that uh, one in seven young men or 13.1% and one in three young women or 31, more than 31% 31 
were not in education, employment, or training, as technological or uh, technically it is called NEET, and this is further exacerbated by, uh, over the past year uh, due to COVID. Um, COVID nineteen has also left at least one in eight people without access to teaching or training due, due to disruption in education and challenges in transition to online or distance learning. Yeah. Uh, we have also seen through the research or studies, uh, including survey with the young people, that young workers with less experience and lower skills are also at higher risk of losing jobs. So uh, this is probably confirmed with some of the answers that you also gave. We will probably see that during, and I'm also happy that some of you also brought out the positive aspects, probably not uh, uh, positive, but at least one aspect that you try to utilize, you know, for example, IT skills, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, but probably you would know and you would also have uh, yourself practiced that a significant number of young people volunteered in response to COVID-19 during this uh, time, uh, during this past one, one and a half year. So could you type in again into the chat, um, what does volunteering mean to you? as a young person. When you think of volunteering, you would have volunteered yourself, but what does it mean to you? What is volunteering? And I think also in the, the attendees, we have a lot of people from different NGOs or and organizations. So you, you would be, you would know, giving back to the community, give without Our return. Personal. A way of doing something, giving back to community, community service, making a difference, helping people, offering your time, doing something useful for other people, motivates helping those in need, doing something with meaning. All right. So since I uh, come from United Nations Volunteers Program, uh, UNV along with ILO is working on identifying or rather we call it measuring the way volunteering impacts or volunteering supports national development. And this to be done through what we call uh, data or statistics that could be collected and uh, as part of the labor force surveys to be able to identify the number of people that volunteer, the amount of time they volunteer. To uh, identify that, like the, the question I asked is what uh, volunteering means to you? In case of uh, technical terms, uh, in 2013, the International Conference of Labor Statisticians, uh, they defined the persons in volunteering work as people of working age who during a short reference period performed any unpaid non-compulsory activity to produce goods or produce services for others. Now, um, you uh, did mention some of these. Now, what does an activity mean? It means a work for at least one hour as per the technical definition. Uh, unpaid, unpaid means absence of cash or in-kind remuneration for work done or hours work, although volunteer workers may receive compensation or stipends. And non-compulsory means work performed without a civil, legal, or administrative requirement. Uh, production for other means work performed outside of household or family of the volunteer himself or herself. Now, um, Another question I had, when you mentioned it motivates you, the way you have done community service, it helped others, could you tell us how have you volunteered? Have you volunteered as part of an organization? Have you volunteered directly or informally? And once you answer, I'll tell you why I'm asking that question. How about you, Maria? Does ISEC provide uh, a lot of opportunities for people to volunteer? Yes, uh, actually, uh, most of our 30,000 members are volunteers. So in um, every 
country and territory where we're present at, young people can start volunteering when they're in um where they're between 18 and 30 years old so it can be done part-time it can also be done um abroad um but right now we're focusing on virtual experiences so it was a big change um because of the pandemic all right and i see people are uh, responding they have volunteered both you know through an organization or uh, directly as well uh, I hope you may be aware that UNV publishes a bi a biennial or every two years um, state of world's volunteering report. According to the last uh, SWVR, in short, as we call, that was published in actually 2018. We are working on the new one uh, this year. It should be published by uh, the end of this year. Uh, according to the uh, SWVR 2018, more than 70% of volunteering is informal or direct, which means that the uh, volunteers perform work directly uh, without necessarily engaging through an organization. The other type of volunteering is formal or organization-based uh, volunteering, as we call it. You could volunteer through ISEC, through other organizations, like you are also answering, that you have volunteered through different organizations. Uh, scouts movement, uh, some of you have also mentioned, and in addition, you have also directly volunteered. Now, significant number of volunteering globally happens directly uh, outside of organization-based volunteering. But there are some very interesting uh, data or information when we try to collate, or rather ILO has collated the data for around 41 countries, which is also available at the ILO stats that around two thirds of the countries, of the 41 countries, uh, which were included in the uh, ILO STAT database, the young people between 15 and 24 years of age, which is the UN definition of young people or youth, are less likely to be involved in direct in, uh, volunteering. So where and how they are volunteering, according to the data that is available, most of the young people are volunteering through organizations or organization-based volunteering. Uh, that doesn't mean that, uh, uh, like you have also mentioned, probably it is a combination of both direct and organization-based volunteering that individuals are uh, um, volunteering, but depends upon the responses that is coming in. And remember, the volunteers are also coming from all kinds of backgrounds, rural, urban, those that have access to technological uh, opportunities, etc. So the uh, data collection and the data responses may show some uh, different uh, aspects than what we usually think uh, may be available vis-a-vis -vis volunteering. Now, when we talk about volunteering, could you also tell us how volunteering empowers young people? Now, I do not want you to write that in the chat. I'm going to share um, Slido, just give me a second. On your screen, you can see the QR code and the code for Slido. Um, can you um, use this code to answer the question which is coming on your screen now? I'll just keep the code for a moment so that you are able to go to Slido and Type in that code and be able to access the question. All right. In the word cloud, type in one word. How does volunteering empower young people? Or rather, in your case, how do you think volunteering has empowered you? I hope you have the code. Yes, and I sent it on the chat as well. All right, perfect, Maria, thanks. All right, greater purpose, improving self-esteem, discovering talents, networking with others, confidence, greater purpose.
All right. Feeling useful. Engagement. We will keep it on for a few more minutes so that you can type in the responses. Greater purpose seems to be the most vision. OK. How about you, Maria? Mm -hmm. uh, as Isaac, um, what do you think? How do people feel or young people feel that it has empowered uh, them by uh, volunteering? Yes, um, I think that um, talking about the current times um, and also drawing from data that we uh, run also with ILO, we realized that during the pandemic, um, volunteering has actually helped a lot of people. And um, I can also talk from my own experience and um, from the people who were writing on the chat, uh, it's been unprecedented times. And I think that uh, volunteering has definitely helped. And out of the 12,000 people that we um, surveyed along with ILO, uh, 50, around 50% 50 said that uh, during the pandemic, they had the opportunity to volunteer. So it is, it, it's definitely been, um, a coping mechanism with the with the times, I would say. Right, right. Um, thanks a lot for all the um, answers. And I see, you know, there. Uh, what is interesting is that some of the answers relate to what one may call soft skills as well: um, teamwork, leadership, uh, feeling useful, improving self-esteem, and others. So. Um, since Maria, you referred to the ILO uh, study as well, and uh, similarly, in case of uh, UNV uh, ILO uh, st a recent study, what we find that volunteering empowers young people in acquisition of work-related skills and experience. It helps access social networks. I saw uh, networking as well as one of the answers uh, here. Um, it helps in signal, uh, you know, getting uh, work-related competences. And uh, one other thing, uh, which may be again relevant more to COVID era, but in general as well, that it may help in uh, mental health as well. That's where probably the self-esteem, the greater purpose aspects also come in and vision. So indeed, uh, do you all, probably you can type that in chat now, do you all think volunteering does empower Do you think volunteering empowers young people? Can you type it in the chat? I'm asking this after you have already answered how it has empowered you. Do you really think it empowers? Yes, yes. yes. See a lot Absolutely. of yeses. Absolutely, yes. All right. OK. And OK. So before going to the next question, we also believe uh, at UN Volunteers Program that volunteering does empower uh, young people. Some of the aspects which I have already mentioned, um, the um, uh, youth empowerment, uh, UNV works with member states or national governments to strengthen the, uh, strengthen the, who would disagree? Okay, uh, I, sorry, I was just reading the chat. Um, UN Volunteers Program works with the member states to strengthen the enabling environment to enable more and more participation of young people in volunteering, ideally through uh, enabling legislations or policies, um, and also uh, setting up institutional structures that uh, could be volunteering schemes or programs that enable young people to be able to join uh, those programs to be able to volunteer. Um, now, while working on these aspects and also doing the research, we feel, and some of you did pose a question who would disagree that it does not empower young people. But while having said that, do you think the young people face challenges in volunteering? And if so, what are the challenges that young people face? Could you answer in the Slido the next question? Type in one word on the challenges or two words. 
that young people face or you ha would have faced in volunteering? Access. Time. Time. Being accepted. Being accepted. Time. Yes, time definitely is very hard and especially Indeed. having to combine it with university can be tricky sometimes. Indeed. All right. Ageism. Not being taken seriously. Very interesting. I think that also from, from Isaac's perspective, uh, being youth run and everyone that works for us is between 18 and 30. It, I completely can relate to the not being taken seriously part when you're really young. Um, so I, I see that it's becoming bigger to the world there. So a lot of people agree. Right. So let me also uh, put in uh, what our research or our discussions uh, show. First, that the uh, young people's experiences on volunteering, they have not always been positive. They sometimes uh, we feel young people are seen as uh, or young volunteers are seen as cheap uh, labor. Uh, but not enough involved when it comes to making decisions like you already said not being taken seriously not uh, being uh, fully involved when it comes to making decisions about solving local problems and being trusted with leadership roles so definitely that is a challenge and perhaps you are confirming that as well and uh, one thing which i uh, maybe i uh, missed reading but you didn't write is that Young people are not one homogeneous group. Uh, there are disparities. There are disparities to access. Uh, there are disparities of access to resources impacting participation. And just to give you one example, today while we are live, uh, most of the people, all of the, not most, all of the people in the session have access to IT, technology, and equipment. Uh, however, uh, and perhaps some of you may have volunteered online, but uh, during COVID-19 as well, one of the things that we have seen is a um, significant increase in the number of people who are volunteering online. However, a 2018 study in developing countries showed that girls were half as likely to own a smartphone. Now imagine in such a situation, perhaps girls not being able to own the smartphone or let's say the IT equipment would limit their usage in comparison with boys, which may exclude girls from volunteering opportunities. So what we need to understand is the access is at, uh, itself is a big challenge and needs to be considered as well. And I just gave you one example of access. There are many more. And uh, what is important is perhaps to understand the disparities and not the homogeneity. Um, the uh, other thing is um, what we found that young people, when they volunteer, they themselves can be vulnerable to risks during COVID-19 as well. If you do not have access to the protective equipment, uh, the same risks apply uh, uh, to the young people. Now, during uh, this is especially true during crisis, yeah? So psycho uh, psychological support, uh, to prevent further uh, exposure to harm and to meet the health and well-being needs are as much important or is a challenge which should be met for the young people to be able to volunteer as well. Now, uh, Maria, in terms of challenges, what we have spoken, but we feel that young people bring a lot of opportunity um, for volunteering, right? 
and pro perhaps one of the things that uh, was mentioned here on the ageism or not being taken seriously as well. So let me try to see if I can probably say something which can address that. But let's go to the next question as well, right? What are the unique opportunities that you bring or young people bring through volunteering? Why do uh, organizations or individuals consider uh, young uh, volunteers or engage young people as volunteers? What are the opportunities that you bring? What are the opportunities that the young volunteers bring? Fresh ideas. How about uh, your experiences, uh, Maria, with ISEC? Yes, uh, I think that um, as Isaac, what we usually see is what people are typing in the in the slide, oh, and it is fresh ideas, motivation, and um, something that we have seen as well is in the changes of generations now with Gen Z, there is a lot more of political drive and um, uh, like an intensity into uh, taking action. So that is something that even as Isaac, we have seen the change between millennials and Gen Z, and that it's something definitely that comes uh, with the younger generations. Right. So we see new points of view, innovation, ideas, energy, new ideas, a diverse perspective, creativity, passion. Growth. Growth. Fun, yeah. Fun. Perfect. It's always great to be uh, amongst young people. Now, this perhaps is also confirmed with uh, the research that we have. Um, we believe that young volunteers are able to bring the different aspects or different components of social action, which, which combines you know, direct action and service provision with online and in-person advocacy as well to solve the local challenges. So individuals who are young people who are bringing fresh ideas, new ideas, are having access to technology, uh, are volunteering online in addition to that in person through organizations or individually, they are combining both. And you would have seen during COVID and we have uh, examples of uh, young volunteers um, helping address the misinformation vis-a-vis -vis COVID in many countries, uh, uh, also coming together to address the uh, issues relating to uh, provision of uh, medicines or food uh, supplies to those that do not have access, old persons or otherwise, definitely. So both combining direct action and service provision, definitely energy uh, motivation does come in into play in that. Young people can also push what we feel, older adults to challenge the traditional practices or ways of thinking. So uh, while you mention uh, the fresh ideas and um, innovation, increasingly we feel that young people are challenging the status quo and opening new spaces for volunteering, especially through use of technology and social media. And uh, the young people's ability to reach those that are left behind enables them also in data gathering um, and assessment activities. Now, uh, for organizations like ours, like in case of United Nations or United Nations Volunteers Program, such data which can be gathered through young people can provide a valuable resource for actors who are designing and targeting responses yeah and finally we also feel that there are opportunities i believe uh, organizations like isec or many others where there is north south 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 volunteering opportunities as well to exchange ideas and to uh, get to know different cultures um, unfortunately, I'm not sure that during COVID that is happening a lot uh, due to travel uh, issues, but definitely that is also one of the aspects wherein the exchange of ideas can help, especially coming from where actually both young volunteers also learn from new cultures, but also bring in their new ideas. All right. Let's now try to understand while this next question is for you to answer with uh, reference to COVID, but in general also, if you can think of, how can young people support crisis response and recovery?
through volunteering. What, according to you, uh, young people bring or uh, through volunteering during crisis and recovery times? You can refer to, like I said, what you have done or how you have volunteered or how you have seen other young people volunteer from your community, neighborhood, um, network, how uh, people, young people are supporting the crisis response and recovery. Manpower. Helping when needed. Mental support, smile, motivation, using skill sets. Raise money, communication, mental support. All right. So, right. Um, according to our research, during the times of crisis, uh, we advocate and we uh, believe young people can especially be um, very, very uh, active and they can be applied through preparation, response, and recovery efforts during any crisis or in response to any crisis. Um, there are UN socioeconomic response plans that have been prepared uh, in the countries, especially in response to COVID-19. They recognize the leadership role that volunteers assume in engaging, especially the marginalized communities, in disseminating accurate information to the remote areas, supporting large-scale health service delivery activities as well, as supporting training and capacity building uh, initiatives and uh, promoting social innovation and youth entrepreneurship as well. Um, we believe that youth volunteering can also support in post-crisis marginalization uh, and exclusion. It can help young people by linking with the communities, can help in a dialogue, in uh, engaging communities with the local authorities, especially to identify the needs that the local communities have and they can help build resilience as well and uh, by linking directly with the communities again to develop a sense of ownership of all the development outcomes, yeah? Um, Maria, can you tell us uh, some of the examples where um, young people have uh, been engaged, especially in crisis response and recovery? Yes, of course. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, one last time about the report that we did with ILO. And something that we saw as well was in the percentages. It was around um, half of the people who had been doing something to help in the recovery. And it can go from anywhere from volunteering directly to volunteering um indirectly with things that supported as well also in essential uh, jobs. So something that we see a lot is that a lot of the people who are in the front lines are young people. Um, and last but not least, it's also what someone mentioned in the slide, which is mental support. And it is um, serving as that um, energy and also helping other people. And um, from my personal experience, um, it's been uh, in the fam in my family as well. Um, seeing different generations cope with this and being the person who's in between the ages, um, I think that young people are playing a very important role. And as you mentioned at the beginning, it's really sad to see that a lot of people are being left behind. Um, but it's good that at least there's spaces like this summit um, to have access to quality content um, in the middle of these times. Thank you, Maria. Now, let me ask you, uh, the last question, what according to you are two issues in COVID-19 recovery plans and advocacy efforts? If you could list those quickly, because I think we have seven minutes left. And yes. I wanted to uh, also tell you about, which may be of interest to you, that you and V, uh, uh, please do go ahead while uh, um, by typing your response um, while I inform you that UN Volunteers Program engages young people or provided opportunities to young people to join as what we call UN Youth Volunteers. 
um, you can uh, go to the unv.org uh, UN Volunteers website. You can look at the different opportunities that are available. You can also check how to become a volunteer, how to become a youth volunteer. For youth volunteer, all youth that are uh, in the age group of 18 to 29, uh, they can uh, apply and join as a UN youth volunteer, which is a full time. It's not. It's a full time engagement with a UN agency, project, program, or initiative. Uh, provides opportunities to young people to be able to contribute to uh, the development discourse. Um, uh, many young people are serving in different duty stations uh, across the globe uh, uh, under the UN Youth Volunteer modality. So I would highly encourage you to um, look for the opportunities, uh, go to the website, uh, put in your credentials, join our global talent pool as well, uh, which may help us identify the qualified individuals in case such opportunities arise. In addition to, of course, you yourself uh, looking for those opp opportunities and directly putting in your applications as well. Now, uh, Maria, when I look at the different answers that I see, um, the two issues, sustainability, uh, everyone has to take a vaccine and bring back people to their jobs. Okay. Mental health mental health, education, low energy, misinformation, finances, vaccine distribution, educational plans, outreach, misinformation, fundraising. Thanks a lot. Please go ahead and keep on in case you have not yet responded. Uh, please do type in. That's the last question I had uh, in terms of uh, to be able to type in your responses. But um, as we are coming to uh, nearing the close, Maria, I just wanted to uh, give um, the participants some of the examples how uh, young people are um, responding to uh, COVID-19 in different countries where UNV has been engaged. Uh, in Peru, uh, 20,000 uh, youth volunteers reached out by phone to 450,000 older adults or people with disabilities throughout the country to understand their needs. Yeah, So they were part of a government program together with UNDP as well to understand the emotional needs, the well-being needs that the people faced. Um, in uh, at the community level, it is very, very important. So, for example, in Zambia, uh, UNDP, UNV, together with the Zambian government, engaged and the National Youth Development Council deployed 833 community youth volunteers. That is also one of the modalities that UNV has, uh, reaching an estimated 700,000 households to debunk the myth and spreading life-saving messages. I saw that misinformation is coming out to be one of the major issues as well. So they did work on um, uh, debunking the myths vis-a-vis -vis COVID. One of the other ways is um, online volunteering. UNV also maintains an online volunteering platform. Um, in uh, Asia Pacific, UNDP and, UN, uh, and the Youth Collab, the UNDP Col uh, Youth Collab and UNV engaged online volunteers to conduct research on youth empowerment and uh, entrepreneurship supporting COVID-19 response. Uh, Lebanese Scouts Federation and UNDP mobilized volunteers across Lebanon to uh, raise awareness on COVID-19 and prevention. Um, in India, uh, the, where I'm from, uh, UNV and UNDP partnered with the National Youth uh, uh, Associations, with the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, or rather with the government to engage young people in response and recovery uh, efforts in 58 districts. Um, in reaching out especially to those that are left behind in rural communities as well. So there has been significant uh, areas where youth volunteers have been engaged, some directly as UN youth volunteers, some through communities, some through volunteering schemes, some uh, through uh, different organizations, in addition to, of course, what youth themselves have volunteered and contributed directly to, in their communities uh, or through online means as well. Um, Maria, what do you think? I mean, we are now in the last two minutes. Um, would you like to share something 
uh, on some of the examples that you would uh, have before we close? Yes, for sure. Um, from uh, Isaac's side, we also we had to make a lot of changes in the opportunities we offer to young people. Um, and right now we have um, starting doing more virtual engagements. And over in 2020, we had the opportunity to have uh, two events, one with 10,000 people joining and the other one with 5,000 people joining, all having access to different um, plenaries and content about sustainable development goals and leadership. And that is something that we're going to be doing as well uh, during this year. So uh, for the people who are joining as well, um, I'm going to leave you the website on the chat and you can um, also check what are the opportunities that Isaac has as well. And I highly encourage you to um, follow us on social media and look for what are these events and what are these touch points that you have access to. And thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh... Maria. And with that, we come to the close of the session. And thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.